You'll never look at these things the same way again. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. Just a heads up, this video is pretty graphic. If you're not done with seeing duck reproductive organs, then I suggest you duck out and check out the safe for work version. Ducks are pretty common. We see them flying overhead, floating down rivers and streams. We don't often give them much thought, but maybe we should. There are many, many different species of ducks, 28 in North America alone, but all are divided into two main categories, dabbling ducks like the common mallard or diving ducks like the hooded merganser. Dabbling ducks cruise along the surface, feeding by putting their heads in the water in a practice that I imagine to other ducks is rather seductive. Different dabbling species have evolved many different types of special bills that act like our fingertips when looking for food. Many dabbling duck's bills have teeth-looking, comb-like structures called lamellae, which filter out mud and water when picking up seeds or bugs. Diving ducks, on the other hand, like their name suggests, head down below to find their food. This can sometimes be a pretty impressive feat. Long-tailed ducks have been netted at 240 feet down in an Ontario lake. All ducks, dabbling or diving, spend their lives around water. Thus, those webbed feet. Webbed feet act like swim fins, allowing them to push through the water with ease. So how do ducks swim in such cold water or stand on the ice in the winter without freezing their feet or sticking to the ice? Well, they have a special counter-current heat exchange system and thus lose very little heat through their feet and legs. Basically, the warm blood flowing to the feet passes by the cold blood returning from the feet. This cools the warm blood to a temperature warm enough to supply nutrients and oxygen to the foot and ward off frostbite. Penises! Ducks have them! Most other birds don't. In fact, only 3% of birds have penises. It turns out that during development, a special protein, BMP4, kills off the cells that would turn into a perfectly acceptable penis. In ducks, this doesn't happen. So penis they have, and what a penis. Muscovy ducks don't just have a run-of-the-mill member. There's this corkscrew shaped. They eject this rather tortured looking instrument from where it usually hides, in their cloacal sac, directly into the female Muscovy vagina. The male corkscrew penis falls off after each mating season and grows back in proportion to the other male competition. So, more ducks means bigger penises. Now, I love a good penis story as much as the next scientist, but the real story here is the vagina, which has evolved to look even more crazy than the penis. It is also corkscrew shaped, but it does so in the other direction with many twists, turns, pockets and dead ends in order to make uncorking the bottle, so to speak, as difficult as possible. Scientists think that the vagina is the result of an evolutionary war of the sexes, with the super aggressive males trying to impregnate as many females as possible, and the females trying to limit the amount of sperm that actually penetrates her defenses. Either way, it makes for an interesting icebreaker at your next party. That is, if you want to be known as the corkscrew penis guy. That one's up to you. What animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. For more on ducks in the city, be sure to check out City Wildlife Rescue. I'll put a link in the description and be sure to go check out their site and donate if you can. Thanks for watching.